We are given the vector valued function r of t and asked to determine the limit as t approaches infinity of the vector valued function r of t. To do this, we determine the limit as t approaches infinity of the three components of the vector valued function. And now we consider each of the three limits. Starting with the limit of the x component, we have the limit as t approaches infinity of four divided by t. In this case, the numerator is the constant four and the denominator of t gets larger and larger and approaches infinity, which means the fractions get smaller and smaller and approach zero, indicating the limit is equal to zero. This tells us the limit as t approaches infinity of the vector value function r of t is equal to a vector in which the x component is equal to zero. And now let's consider the limit of the y component. We have the limit as t approaches infinity of three t squared divided by the quantity two minus t minus two t squared. To determine limits at infinity, when we have a rational function and the numerator and denominator are polynomial functions, we only need to consider the term in the numerator with the highest degree and the term in the denominator with the highest degree, which means we can determine this limit by only considering three t squared over negative two t squared. The given limit is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of, again, three t squared divided by negative two t squared, which notice simplifies, t squared divided by t squared simplifies to one, leaving us with the limit as t approaches infinity of simply negative three halves, which is not affected by t, indicating the limit is equal to negative three halves. This should remind us of the rule that if the degrees are the same, the limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. We now know the y component is equal to negative three halves. And now let's consider the limit of the z component, which is the limit as t approaches infinity of e raised to the power of negative two t. To help us determine this limit, it'll be helpful to write e to the power of negative two t using a positive exponent. e to the power of negative two t is equal to one divided by e to the power of positive two t. In this form we can see the numerator stays at one and as t approaches to infinity, the denominator increases in the positive direction without bound, indicating the fraction gets smaller and smaller and approaches zero. We now know the z component of the vector is zero. The limit as t approaches infinity of the vector valued function r of t is equal to the vector with an x component of zero, a y component of negative three halves, and a z component of zero. I hope you found this helpful.